now our partial copy sandbox is also ready i've named it as qa so it's a partial copy sandbox so the status is completed now what we'll be doing is we'll be comparing our dev sandbox that we have created and the qa sandbox that we have created the difference between these two sandboxes that we have is one is a developer sandbox another one is a partial copy sandbox so in a partial copy in addition to the metadata we'll also get the data that is there in the production so let's quickly see that in our production org so this is the production org that i'm connected to so if you see we have the service request object within which inside this object we have six records as a system admin i can see six records here so this is the production view now let's log in into our qa sandbox and see what exactly we have there so i'm logging into the partial copy sandbox which i've named it as qa so i'm clicking on login in here from the production or in case if you want to log in log in directly not from the production you can always make use of the test.salesforce.com url so the username here would be similar to what we have in the production so directly use the username that you have in production since we are logging into the sandbox it would be appended with .qa so go ahead and select it and the password would also be similar to what you have used in production so go ahead and uh, enter the password that you have used for your production or and click on login to the sandbox so that is how you can log in into your sandbox directly in case if you are doing it from the a production or simply click on login and it would redirect to the same page and for the username and password you can click on login to the sandbox so this is a a two a two ways how how we can log in into your sandbox test.salesforce.com is a preferred way wherein which you can log in into your org directly so if you are doing it for the first time and you wanted to test it from the sandbox page you can always use your login button let's quickly compare if we have our changes in our sandbox or not so remember this qa is a partial copy sandbox as soon as i switch to the right app i can see the service request object here service object service request object tab here if i click on it if i look at all records i can see all the six records that we have in the production the second tab that i have is my production org where in which we have six records in the sandbox also we have six records so why we are having the same set of records in production and in the sandbox partial copy sandbox also it is because of the template that we have chosen in our template we have told the system that this is the data that we want to copy from our production or into our sandbox so that is where it has copied the chain copied the entire records into our sandbox let's look at what we have in our dev sandbox is it the same case or not so do we have the data there or not is something that we'll check so again i'm making use of my uh, username that i have in production appending dot sandbox name since i've named it as dev i'm entering dot dev here feel free to change the sandbox name here in case if you have named it differently i'm entering the production password here clicking on login to sandbox now here also on the same tab now i'm currently logged in into the dev sandbox here on the same app i have this service request tab that means the metadata has been copied in the service request list view when i select it as all i hardly see any records here if i have to be precise there are no records that we can see here the reason for that is it is a dev sandbox where in which we have the metadata changes we will get the metadata from production and there is no data that has been copied from production to our dev sandbox so this is the key difference between a partial copy sandbox and a dev sandbox where in which the metadata has been copied in your both the orgs whereas the data is only copied in your partial copy sandbox what would happen if i create a record in my dev sandbox do i get to see that records in my qa and the production let's quickly check that out so i'll go ahead and create a record and i'll quickly create a new record here in the dev sandbox i'll name it as dev record and i'll click on save here Right. a record has been created in our dev org right we have named it as dev record so we have created our dev record in our dev sandbox now let's go ahead and look at what exactly we have in production do we get to see that dev record in our production org 
So let's let quickly refresh this one and see. So if you see here, we still see six records, but we do not see the seventh record that has been created in our dev org, right? So this is the reason why we would be using our sandboxes because we cannot disconnect from the org from where it has been cloned and we can go ahead and perform our testing, development and training within those orgs without affecting the actual data that we have in production, right? So this is a simple use case where in which we can understand the importance of our sandboxes. Now, same is the true in our QA sandbox also. If I refresh this org, I would not be seeing the record number seven here, right? We would not be seeing the record number seven in our QA sandbox. Now, what would happen if I create a record in my production? Will it be copied to the sandboxes also? Let's quickly test that out. So I'm currently in my production org. I'm creating a new record here. So I'll name it as prod record and I'll click, click on save. So now we have our record created in our production and we have named it as prod org. So it is going by name R007. So we have seventh record in our production org. So if I go ahead and refresh my QA sandbox, again, we would not be having the data copied into your QA sandbox. Even though it's a partial copy, we would not have those changes in our QA sandbox. Why? So once we have created a copy of our production org using our partial copy sandbox, which is QA, so we would be getting the metadata from this org from the production org, and we'll also get the data from the production org. But the changes that are done to the production would not be directly copied into your QA sandbox. So this is a kind of a independent sandbox here, or this is, we can say this QA is acting as an independent org, and this production is acting as an independent org. Same is the case with our dev org also. Now this QA org, dev org, and the production are three different orgs. So now let's see, is there any way to copy the changes from our production into your QA sandbox? So let's say today you have created your QA sandbox after a few days you wanted some more data that is there in your production and you want that into your QA org. So is there any way to copy the data from your production into your sandbox? So let's quickly test that out. So the the process of basically getting the latest changes from your production into your sandbox is nothing but your refresh. Let's understand the concept that has been used to copy the changes that are there in your production into your sandbox once it has already been created. Now, if you see here, the concept that we'll be using is sandbox refresh. What exactly is a sandbox refresh? Refreshing a sandbox updates the sandbox metadata from its source org. If the sandbox is a clone, or if it uses a sandbox template, the refresh process updates the org data in addition to the metadata. So if our org is a partial copy sandbox or a full copy sandbox, in addition to copying the metadata, it also gets the org's data depending on the template that we have used, right? So if it is a normal org like dev, dev, sand, dev type sandbox or developer pro sandbox, it only copies the metadata. So now let's see that in action. So for that, I'll go back to the Salesforce org. So now if you see here, in our sandbox section, we have this refresh buttons that we have. So if I click on refresh, that is where the system would start the process of getting the latest changes into this org. From where? From production. So let's quickly click on this refresh button. So now it is asking me the refresh process. So now I'll click on this partial copy, click on next. I do not want anything here. I still want this data to be copied. I'm using the same template here that we have used previously. I'll click on create. Now the system would start processing the request that we have submitted. So it would get the latest changes in addition to the metadata that we have in our production org. So remember we had created one record extra in our production org. So the expectation here is this record has to be copied into our QA sandbox. As of now, our QA sandbox doesn't have that record number seven. So once this process is done, we'll be seeing the record number seven here. For the refreshing interval, so for every type of a sandbox that we have, it has a refresh interval. What exactly is a refresh interval? This is the minimum time that you need to have 
for refreshing your sandbox for a developer sandbox it is one day for developer pro also it is one day for partial copy you can do it in five days interval for a full copy you can go ahead and do it for 29 days interval so this is something that you can keep in mind so that you have an understanding of what is that refresh interval for a particular type of a sandbox that we have let's also refresh this dev org Select the type of the sandbox here. I do not want this uh, Apex classes to be running here. So I'll click on create. Now we have our sandboxes refreshed. So now is the time where in which we need to activate them. So I'll go ahead and activate the QA sandbox first, and then we'll see what is the status of our dev sandbox. I'll also go ahead and activate the dev sandbox as well, just to save some time. Now the refresh part is complete. Let's log in into the QA org and check out the latest changes that we have from the production going into the QA. Now I'm on my QA sandbox. Let me just quickly switch to the service app. Upon doing the refresh, we have got the production record into our sandbox. Since it is a QA sandbox and it is a partial copy sandbox, we were able to get the data that we have in the production into our sandbox. Let's quickly compare it. So we have seven records in the production and this is the record that we have created recently and in our sandbox also we got the production or we have a production record that has been copied from our production org so this is how the metadata as well as the data would be copied when you do a refresh of a sandbox now let's also look at the dev sandbox to see if the data has been copied remember that it's a dev sandbox and we don't have a option of copying the data from the production but we'll check what exactly the data that we have in our dev sandbox now i'm logged in into my dev sandbox looking at the service request if you look at this developer sandbox we had created record number seven in our dev sandbox and now if you see the data is gone remember that when you're refreshing the sandbox the data that you have within it would be gone so this is something also a point to be remembered in case if you are doing a refresh it is a kind of a fresh sandbox that you would get with the metadata but not with the data that you have let's go back to the production i'm currently on the production or if you see here earlier we had refresh options here depending on the refresh cycle you would be seeing the refresh button enabled or disabled here now, in case if you want to check the sandbox history, there is the sandbox history tab where in which you can go ahead and look at what is the changes that are done on the particular sandbox. So when it was refreshed, who has initiated that refresh and who has activated it, all this basically can be looked at from your sandbox history tab. So that is all for this video. Stay tuned for more. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.